Digital literacy requires much more than just knowing how to operate software. It means that students know why and when to apply powerful technologies like Adobe Creative Cloud in the first place. Digital literacy is thus more of an open capacity than a simple skill. It's a way of thinking and a habit of mind that needs cultivation through an array of contexts and experiences. The most successful approaches to teaching digital literacy deeply leverage active learning and engaged collaborative projects with a focus is on creating, producing, making, and problem solving. For example, students are more likely to transfer and scaffold early digital literacy experiences into other contexts when they are asked to do things like publish their research or analysis in a student journal or magazine, design infographics and posters to complement an oral presentation, edit a video or podcast about an academic topic, prototype a mobile app to address a health science issue, or communicate impactfully through digital storytelling. Pedagogies that assign projects that promote higher order thinking must also leverage iterative loops of creation, feedback, revision, and reflection to deepen students' digital literacies. Now let's hear from education leaders who have helped their students become digitally literate through these approaches to teaching and learning. For decades now, campuses everywhere have been promoting the importance of active learning, flipped classrooms, project-based learning, high-touch pedagogies, experiential learning, and engaged student experiences. And research shows that such pedagogies are key to student success. When you put powerful technologies like Adobe Creative Cloud in the hands of students, you would actually have to work pretty hard to avoid such active, engaged experiential learning. Creative Cloud is a mobile, scalable digital makerspace that goes with students on their devices wherever they might be learning. One of my favorite approaches to teaching digital production is to have the whole class become a sounding board for each other. So students do presentations when they're pitching the project and then they show various drafts to everyone and then they show the final. And what we do is that we all together provide the student with ideas, feedback, we answer their questions, and it becomes a hive mentality. Everybody takes responsibility for everybody's project, and since they're all doing the same project, they have a lot to offer. There's a lot of richness, and as they see other people's projects and they have ideas for their own, it's such a beautiful, beautiful experience to do it this way. I approach teaching digital literacy like a toolbox where you store your hammer, your drill, your screwdriver, and so on. My method of teaching is broken down into three parts. First, I help students understand why the tools are relevant to them. Second, I help students understand when to use certain digital tools for certain situations. Third, I let them create. Throughout this process, I act as a guide and helping students translate their ideas that they have in their head into visual images. Once students learn the process of connecting their idea to the creative process and they're comfortable with the tools, they'll never stop creating. I fundamentally root my approaches to digital literacy in having students make something. That is, they have to make a video or an, a podcast, something that involves the, their, them thinking about how to edit together different media types to create a media artifact. They have to then export that media artifact into a playable, shareable file, upload it to a streaming service, and then share or distribute that work. And in so doing, they've touched on a number of critical areas tied to what we define as digital literacy broadly. As I'm teaching my students these platforms, I explain to them, it's okay if you don't know everything from the beginning. There is going to be a learning curve. There's going to be some frustration at the beginning, but what you will walk away with is so worth it. It is so, so worth it. And I think the students, they see, they see that themselves, they see the value because they are consuming these media themselves. They see the standard that's being set online. And as a result, they are self-motivated. They, I just open the door. If I say, um, I encourage you to write an essay, but then transform it multimodally, they will seek out those resources on their own. It's not something that I have to say, please, you know, please do better. They want to, they're desirous of this on their own. And I think that's the cool thing about the creative cloud. What that allows students to do is have, it's to spark that inner motivation to seek and to create.
Teaching digital literacies is best done by being explicit and providing heavy scaffolding. It's critical to make sure students understand why you're asking them to learn and use a particular technology. How will it benefit them now with this project? How will it benefit them in the future? Being explicit also means asking them to document and share their choices through the production process. When you add digital creativity, when you work with creativity in the classroom, uh, you're actually upping the uh, expectation level because now all of a sudden not only do you have to uh, gain understanding from the readings, from the theory that you're processing and all this, but you also have to show that through your creation of artifacts.